Hello, my name is Joyce Maxwell. I am a professor of English at a community college in New Jersey, United States of America. So I teach English and that encompasses a lot of different things. People think, oh, English is just grammar, learning how to spell properly, learning how to write a sentence correctly, learning how to put a period at the end of your sentence or a full stop. But English encompasses so much more. It is about reading different types of books. Some of those books are fantasy. They can be about werewolves. They can be about animals. They can be about children or adults. We read graphic novels. We read comic books. We also study newspaper articles and media events and social events. We study politics. We study government. So English is more than just about reading and writing. It's actually, I would say, the foundation for many, many disciplines and careers. And I'm not just speaking of English as a language, but English as a discipline, because it teaches critical thinking. Um, it teaches different perspectives. And I'll tell a short story. I just finished teaching a class and one young woman and one young man got into a debate over what empowerment means or what power means for women. And the woman was saying how we live in a society where men seem to control everything that girls or women do in terms of their bodies, in terms of their careers, in terms of studying. And a young man responded and said, well, no, I don't do that. My friends don't do that. And we had to begin to talk about what is, you know, the societal norm versus the individual norm. And so we had to have this, cons this this discussion that all men don't do that. All men don't try to control women's bodies. But from a societal perspective, it often happens. And so that can come up in English. We have so many different types of conversations and it all falls under that umbrella known as English. The most challenging, I will be honest, is grading the paper. So if anyone is interested in becoming a professor or a teacher, you have to do what I call the grunt work, meaning you actually have to sit down at night when everyone else has finished their day, they're done their work for the day, they're watching TV, they're eating, they're hanging out with family. And although you may have taught your classes, now you have to do homework, just like students do homework. So professors and teachers have homework too. You have to prepare for the next class or the next day to be ensured that you have all your materials ready to teach. You have to do your homework in terms of reading so that when you walk into the classroom, it is not just the students who have read, but you've also read. You have to decide what your lesson plan is going to be, how you're going to teach specific concepts. You also have to grade papers or grade tests. You have to prepare the tests so that you can give them to the students. And then you have to go home and grade them. And so that can be cumbersome, meaning that it can take up a lot of time and you find that you work more hours as a teacher or a professor than someone else because your job is just not in the classroom when you're with the students. Your job starts the moment you begin to think, what am I going to teach in this class for this amount of time? How am I going to teach it? What materials am I going to use? How am I going to give them the information? And then you're teaching. And then after you teach, how am I going to grade my students? How am I going to assess them? How am I going to keep them focused? If they're not getting the material, how am I going to teach it better so that they can understand the concepts I want them to understand? So that can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes it's disheartening. Sometimes you get a student that you don't connect with and you, no matter how hard you try, it just doesn't work out. And so you become disappointed. 
And so those are kind of the worst parts of the job. The best part is that I'm a people person. I love people. I love talking. I'm a chatterbox. I love learning from other students and I love teaching as well. And so I just really enjoy being in the classroom. I enjoy engaging with students. I believe that students come to the classroom full of energy and life and they give me that energy and life. I had a student teach me about TikTok. I had no idea what it was. So I learn new things every day. So I think as a professor, I'm also just a lover of learning. And so I don't always feel like I'm just giving information to someone. I believe that every person I meet, every student I meet in the classroom, they give me something back as well. And that's the best part of the job because I just love to connect with people and I feel that that heart to heart connection with every single one of my students just makes me a better person overall. I've not always been a good student. So people think that professors and teachers are the smartest person in the classroom and the one who always gets the best grades, always shows up all the time, always do, does their assignments on time. That is not true. So I am a lover of learning, but I have had times in my own learning history where I've fallen by the wayside. I did not do assignments one time. If I told you about my high school career, which would be standard eight, nine, ten, I, I didn't go to school. I would hooky a lot, um, meaning that I would cut class. I did not do well in school, but I was I was a teenager and I was a, I was wild. That's the truth. I was wild. So. Um, but I'm al I've always been a person who loves to read and just loves to meet people and do new things. And so I think that was part of the wildness too. I, I was bored sitting in the classroom. So I wanted to be out in the world, meeting people and learning from people in a physical way versus sitting in the classroom and having someone write on a chalkboard and just kind of tell me something. I wanted to be the person to actually feel it. So that's what I can say. Um, but beyond that, you know, I got, I finally got it together when I got a little older. <laughs> but beyond that, I've, I've always loved books. I've always loved to read. And I think that's why I really became an English professor because even as a child, I would watch TV and then I would make a book out of a TV show I saw, or I would make a comic strip. And every Christmas I had an aunt who only, who gave me a novel and it was the best gift from any other gift. I wasn't a person who really cared about clothing or this or that. I just wanted books. And, and she got that, even more so than my mother, who did not really read that much, although she enjoyed the fact that I read it. I read, excuse me, but my aunt gave me, gave me tons and tons of books and I would just devour them. And I'm still that way. I, I love a good book. I can sit by myself all day. And I know that's where my passion for, for teaching and English came from. Depending on what level you want to teach at, that will first determine how much edu formal education you have to get. So most teachers, even now with you know pre-K or kindergarten, the young students who are about three, four, five years old, they want you to have a master's degree. So first you have to commit to formal education and the number of years it will take beyond the high school diploma or certificate, you definitely need to go and get your bachelor's degree and then you would have to get some type of master's degree. Now, if you're interested in just becoming a teacher, you also need a certification. If you're interested in becoming a professor, you need to become a professional in a specific discipline, meaning my specific discipline is English for someone else that may be science, math, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first point, commit to several years of education. 
beyond education, you also have to commit to liking students. I, I, I have to admit, and some of you may know this, you have a teacher that you feel like they just don't care or a professor who doesn't care or you feel they're really mean or they're not listening to you. And I think that education is changing in many ways and more educators are realizing that you have to have compassion. You have to have compassion for your students. And so if you are a person who loves to read, but you are a person who also doesn't really like to be in a room full of people where you need to perform. And when I say perform, think of it as any other performance, like an actor or a poet or a musician. When you're a teacher, you're performing. Because if no one else comes prepared to class, you have to be prepared for class. And for the number of minutes or hours that you have class, if no other student speaks, you need to speak. You need to be prepared. So you're sort of like a performer in the sense that you walk into a classroom, you have your materials prepared, and you are now performing for the, your students while you're giving them information and you're exchanging ideas and knowledge. And that's my own philosophy about teaching. So I feel like you have to, you have to have compassion. You have to have an ethic of caring. You have to love not just learning, but love exchanging knowledge and love people and cultures and differences of opinion and being willing to navigate that and facilitate that. Because in many ways, a, a professor or a teacher is, is a nurturer. And so right now we're in 2020, there's a global pandemic. Many students are unable to go to school. Some students are participating virtually versus being in the classroom. And many parents are realizing, wow, a teacher's job is really difficult. I didn't know this is what you had to do. And so you have parents posting on social media and they only have one job. And now they can't figure out how did you handle a classroom full of 30 students or 50 students or 100 students because they can't handle their one biological child in front of a computer. And so I say that to say a teacher's job is nurturing many, many, many different souls. And in that nurturing process, you are attempting to add life, add vibrance, add knowledge, add love to that soul every day. And many students spend more time in school than they do at home. They come to school early in the morning. They may eat breakfast at school. They stay at school all day. They may stay after school. They may eat lunch and dinner. So think about the fact that you are parenting upwards of 200 children a day and they look at you as a mentor as their as their second mother or second father or it's your, their second home and so you definitely have to have compassion and and you just have to have empathy and you have to have love